Even the prospect of an eight-hour drive didn't deter Steve Lee from the chase. The conditions were simply too good to pass up. A powerful jet stream was howling from the desert southwest through the high plains, with a jet speed maximum embedded in this powerful flow. This coupled with abundant moisture and unstable air made conditions ripe for severe thunderstorms and possibly tornadoes. Since I had so much luck finding weather data in Nebraska rest stops during the previous chase, it was the first stop we made upon reaching Lincoln, Nebraska. Well, uh oh. Undaunted, we were ready to hit the road again when we discovered other storm chasers had gathered in the parking lot, and some of them had radar. This is starting to dissipate a little bit. What do you think of the Columbus thing? A friend of mine was, when I was talking to him, he was going to go there and... Well, it's not that far north. I mean, if something started popping down in here, you we could come back. There have not been any warnings, though, other than way out west. Way out there's there. no warning on the Columbus no. thing. No. And, you know, it's not even up to 40. At least the one at the Russell level is 47. What, 47,000 yeah. feet? And, it, the, and the best dew and the, uh, the best dew points and everything. I mean, this was like 60, 83 or 67, something like that. It's just one of these days, I'm going to be mad as hell if I don't get some yesterday, though. I was batting a thousand before. While we were on the road, western Nebraska had been rocking. Several tornadic storms were tracking across this region of the state. They produced, collectively, an anvil cloud shield easily seen on this color-enhanced image. The northern storms can be seen, too, forming along a front. The logic of holding out hope on a southern storm is simple. This area of Nebraska was closer to the dry line and to the most unstable air. If a storm could gain a foothold here, it was likely to be a doozy. We decided not to chase the northern storms, but continued west on I-80. Suddenly, a sharp-eyed Steve Lee spotted a thunderstorm tower to the south, and we immediately began to intercept this storm. We decided not to core punch this storm from the north, but to instead try to get ahead of it by darting to the east. Surrounded by anvil lightning, this was our first glimpse of the ominous southwest corner of this supercell storm. The tornado warning for Sherman County did expire. Uh, again, the tornado warning in Sherman County has been canceled. Severe thunderstorm warning for people in Kearney County has been canceled. That storm has moved out of the warning area and no longer poses a severe weather threat there in Kearney County. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. We are seeing tremendous inflow into this developing wall cloud. Uh, I can't see it because of these low trees on the left, but there's a lot of low-level um, clouds flowing into this. We have had a lot of anvil lightning out ahead of this, so there's no way we are getting out of this. In fact, there was one just to our right, so we are not getting out of this vehicle. From space, this storm shot up near the edge of the anvil shield. The bubbly appearance is caused by violent storm updrafts penetrating the anvil. In this zoomed-in shot, notice that the storm actually began as towering cumulus clouds in north-central Kansas. Radar also reveals the awesome structure and development of this severe thunderstorm in Thayer County, Nebraska. We're looking at something and we're not quite sure we know what it is. Uh, this could be two tornadoes. We don't really pick up the wind warm, is humid air flowing warm in. Warm humid east. air flowing in from the east. We either have one tornado dying and a new one forming, or we have two tornadoes on the ground at the same time. We really don't know. That thing is really wrapping up to you.
Highway 15 South, uh, north of Alexandria, I know that, <laughs> quite a bit. 15, 15 South, we're uh, south of a town called Western. That's it. As darkness set in, we suspected this tornado was still on the ground, but had no idea how powerful it was. It wasn't until the next day that we learned that the town of Hallam, Nebraska, had experienced nearly complete devastation by a tornado that was at least a mile wide.